breaking news story tonight. A federal judge has blocked FDA approval of an abortion pill, threatening the use of it nationwide once the ruling takes effect. Governor Pritzker has just weighed in on this. This is a statement from the governor. It says, in part, this ruling is a clear and concerted effort by anti-abortion, far-right activists and politicians to dismantle sexual and reproductive health care nationwide. We will not let them win. Also, you've got this statement from the lieutenant governor, Juliana Stratton, saying attempts to block the rights of anyone threatens the freedom of everyone. The ruling out of Texas aims to challenge a woman's liberty and the right to make choices for oneself. We cannot and will not let this happen. Uh, let's go now to our uh, political analyst, Paul Lisnick. He's joining us this evening with uh, this topic and so many more, obviously, local topics. And uh, all, just weigh in on this for All for after a business on a Friday night, yeah. right? Which is, a judge does that when they want things to, like, maybe skip the news mm -hmm. cycle, especially on this holiday weekend. Uh, so, when the Texas case first came down, that case was filed in Amarillo, Texas, where uh, it, it's basically forum shopping, it's judge shopping. There's only one judge there. You file it in Amarillo. This is the guy that's going to hear it, Judge Kaczmarek. And there's no question as to what his background is. He used to work for a law firm that was all about opposing abortion. So the, the plaintiffs knew exactly where they were going with this, and, and they got it. Um, so early on, when the decision came down, I had texted everybody and said, okay, this is coming down. We'll have to talk about it because what's going to happen next is that the government will appeal to the Fifth Circuit, which runs that, and then go to the the Supreme Court after that. And then minutes later comes this case the out, other of, ruling. out of, of Washington, Washington State, yeah. uh, which Illinois is a part of, by the way. And that says, wait a minute, not only should um, Metapristone Pristone stay on the market, but in fact, it needs to be even easier to get. It's literally in direct opposite of what the Texas judge ruled. Now, the difference is the Texas case would remove this drug off of every shelf in the nation. The Washington case would only deal with the 12 blue states that filed that lawsuit. Why? Well, because essentially if Texas says this drug isn't safe, that's a federal kind of sense and off it goes. But as I said, in the, with regard to the blue states, it's a matter of no, you need to make it more, uh, more available. So your request for a stay, who, who would then be, you know, the presiding judge? that would, you know, have, have the say in this. So that's a great question because now with this co conflict, it pretty much has to go up to the Supreme Court initially. And of course, you got to get a stay, right? Because, I mean, before you anything can happen. Right. Exactly. So ultimately, the, the court will deal with it. But before the court deals with it, especially in this time of holiday, one justice will have to issue it. The justice in charge of Texas is Justice Samuel Alito. Mm. Alito is the one who wrote the decision in Dobbs knocking down the abortion right. decision. He's going to be the guy who ultimately decide whether there will be a stay mm -hmm. uh, with regard to this metapristin case. That's fascinating. All right, there's always so much to every story, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I want to talk about the local race. We sure. had elections this week, we and did. already Brandon Johnson has had meetings with Mayor Lightfoot. He had a meeting today with Governor Pritzker, and I guess it came out in one of the headlines that Governor Pritzker opposes the financial tax transactions on, on taxing the transactions. Conflict number one. Yeah, conflict number <laughs> one. So talk to me about what these meetings are like as he, as he meets with some of the local officials. What does he get out of them? Look, so generally these meetings are ceremonial, right? And they're going to be pleasant and everybody's wishing mm -hmm. everybody well and that's exactly what Mayor Lightfoot and Governor Pritzker should be doing so all went according I'm sure to plan uh, but the message that that Mayor-elect Johnson gets today is his very bold plan for handling policing and all of that which carries as we talked about on air endlessly a very hefty price tag to it uh, which he's got to get in a variety of ways and part of that will include the state stepping in with certain taxes Governor Pritzker wasted no time in coming out to, today and saying I'm not supporting that, and I never have. And, of course, uh, Mayor Lick Johnson said, well, we haven't talked fully about yeah. this, yeah. so we'll see. Listen, he uh, Johnson says he's a coalition builder. He already knows that this is something he's going to have to build, not only with the leadership uh, of, the, of the state legislature, but, look, he's got relationships to build with the police force. Um, you're going to be mayor. You've got to build these forces, and, of course, with city council as well, where there's different factions. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. We'll see if his skills come to play. All right. Well, expanding here, staying in the Midwest, two neighboring states doing two very different things. Wisconsin voters gave the state Supreme Court a liberal majority now. At the same time, Indiana uh, just enacted a law this week uh, that would ban gender-affirming care for minors. 
Two neighboring states doing politically polar opposite things. And interesting because both surround us, mm -hmm. which means when people need help, Illinois might be a state right. that they want to be able to come to, right? Let's just talk about Indiana first if we can. You're mm -hmm. right, gender-affirming care being banned there, signed by the governor, uh, for minors without parental consent. So that's going to have to work its way through the court system. But of course, at least in the state level, we'll see what the Indiana Supreme Court says, which of course is conservative. That may make its way up to a conservative U.S. Supreme Court, same as it's true with the abortion case we talked about at the beginning yeah. of our segment. With regard to Wisconsin, what's interesting about that is Wisconsin, which has certainly taken a turn towards uh, cons conservatism, except for their governor, by pulling in after 15 years of a conservative Supreme Court, now bringing in a deciding more liberal vote, although this new justice hasn't said which way she'll vote, but she does say she supports abortion rights. So that's Wisconsin taking a step more towards uh, progress or progressiveness within that state when it comes to the abortion issue. And I think that's what pushed the votes. And there's a, a message technically for Wisconsin's, uh, Wisconsinians there who say, look, which way do you want the court to go? Uh, which, do you want the state to go? Because now the court is going to go in a certain way and voters what a register. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't be a political night without talking about Trump, right? Uh, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot going on in that case as well, but just today it came out, or this week, that the judge in that case had apparently donated, what, I think it's like $50 it, to no, total Democrat, 50, total $15 uh, in one to, case, to, yeah. exactly, to Biden and $35, I think, to a, to a Democratic group. So here's the thing, look, and then the question is, can he, should he stay in the case, can he be fair? Well, he will get challenged, there's no question about that. Look, every judge in every case votes for somebody, right? So there's no question he has a preference. And what he did wouldn't ordinarily uh, automatically disqualify him. But when you're dealing with President Trump in this case, the fact that he made any kind of donation, whether it's $15 or $1,000, mm -hmm. isn't going to make much of a difference. It's mm -hmm. going to question his impartiality. So I think it's going to be problematic with him. I don't, with him, I don't think he's going to step down. But we'll see where the motions will take it. It's going to be difficult. The message is if you're a judge, just like the judges in the abortion cases, you really ought to stay neutral right. uh, yeah. in all this stuff and not support particular candidates with money. It's just not a smart thing to do. We had Clarence Thomas. I know we're not yeah. going to have time. Yeah. But Clarence Thomas, who had issues with donations, with money he was taking from trips, friends, yeah. and that you have to disclose this stuff, folks, and it's, it's just not ethical not to. Even when it's a total of $50. Or 500000 yeah. in the case of Clarence <laughs> Thomas. Uh, Sunday right. show. Hey, we're a special Easter show for Lourdes, because uh, I know she and her daughter will be watching. We're going to have <laughs> Alderman-elect Bennett Lawson, the new Alderman for the 44th Ward. He's going to come in, say some interesting things, I think, about the independence of city council and whether he supports that. And then Ed Yanka of the ACLU of uh, Illinois is going to come in and talk about, revisit some of these Indiana, Wisconsin things going on. Interesting. So a really okay. interesting special Easter show I on Sunday morning Paul at is 9. Thank I think you, you need much. two hours this weekend. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I, we'll start now. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.